songwriter. You know what I'm saying? We involved in the, in the industry, in the music industry at the time. Well, getting his foot in. You know what right. I'm saying? So he was still hustling. I always, I always heard stuff. Just different type of music, all kind of music, and I don't know. I think I, I'm, I'm a real blessed individual because even at that age, I never let somebody tell me what was good and what wasn't good. Right. I either liked it or I didn't. Mm -hmm. Whether my dad was playing it or it was on the radio. If I liked it, I liked it. If it made me feel good, it made me feel good. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so. Uh, but Pops was listening to everything, you know, Whispers, you know, the Whispers, oh, the Five Stair Steps, my dad from Chicago, the Five Stair Steps, you know, Marvin Gaye's, Stevie, Smokey's, Isaac Hayes, you know, me and Paris was like, well, I was a little brother, so I was listening to what he was kind of listening to, which was hip hop, he started really, we started really listening to hip hop and uh, you know, we just like good music man, but the, the cool thing was we we felt like the music that we were listening to was a connection to the stuff that we grew up as babies listening to, you right, know what I'm right. saying? So, like to listen to Tribe and people like, wow, this is kind of, you know, unique and, but I, I kind of felt like I had heard it already. Like, right. you know, this is the stuff my dad listened to. They just rapping over it. You know right. what I'm saying? That's how yeah. I felt. I mean, we would go to sleep to Sade. We would go to sleep to Donald Byrd. Like, right. this is no joke. Like, yeah. seriously. Like, this isn't this isn't my dad or some grown-up playing it. And we like, man, I like that song. You know, you fall asleep. No, mm -hmm. this is, we had our own tapes. Mm -hmm. And in our room, we would put that on and just lay in the bed and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. We had bunk beds, you know, on top bed. On the bottom, we can listen. My mom coming in, y'all need to turn it out. Y'all got school in the morning. Like, look, this is what it is. This is how it goes in. That's no joke. When I moved, when when I moved to Texas, and Paris, me and me and Pete used to, uh, he used to be rapping all the time. He used to write, rap, just to mess around. But we just did it, just like, just for entertainment. Like we just used to have fun doing it. It right. had nothing to do with. Seriously, like, I can rap, fool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It had nothing to do with that. We used to just be in the house, and we just loved music so much that we just just would do it, like, right. you know? And so I had the little radio, and I used to get find, like, instrumental things, loop them up. My last, like, year and a half in college mm -hmm. is when I got some, at least something to try to make beats on. Right. And I started trying to make beats and I really and at that time is when I felt like man I'm gonna start learning how to do this because I'm gonna do it I know it, it might be hard to describe but like how do you conceptualize a certain beat you know what I mean like yeah. like you know what what are the building blocks that it takes for you to put together something like the way you describe and put mm -hmm. orchestrating mm -hmm. you know music mm -hmm. not just all right, I'm in here, I'm making the beats. Right, that right. go to loop, boom, MC here, repeat, right. you know, like that. But right. since you're, you know, talking about bridges mm -hmm. and, you know, refrains, and I mean, just everything that, that simple song structure has incorporating in it and kind of bringing that to rap music, like how do yeah. you, right, how do you build that? You know what I mean? Because yeah. like when, when it goes, when it's time for a change or yeah. Yeah. when you bring yourself back. Well, Things gotta be different. Like, think about this. You be listening to a Marvin Gaye joint, right? Right. And like, the first eight or 16 bars, like, there's no singing, there's no nothing. There's just a beat playing. Right. Have you ever seen a hip hop do that? Like, on a hip hop album? And then like, but, but people would think his shit is wrong. Like, right off the jump, you would think like, not us, but a normal dude would be like, say we in here talking about making a song, right? right. And I'm like, yeah, I want the first 16 bars just to just be playing just right. music the niggas would be like what right. no hook no no nah, nah, nah. it don't necessarily have to be bam oh my god this is the greatest album in the world it's selling this it's selling that mm -hmm. it's doing this it's doing that but it's going i want it to be something i love that i you know don't get twisted i would love to turn on the radio and they like playing this song mm -hmm. and you know what i'm saying like because it's just that good it's like man we just, i don't care what it is we gotta play it i would love that but the impact is this. 
I would like for a guy like Jay Z to go, who owns, you know, who has a record label, to go. Hey, if y'all not doing this stuff, I'm not signing. If you guys right. can't. You know what I'm saying? Just like when Marley Mar was doing what he was doing, it was impact. Right. It was Russell Simmons like, hey, y'all need to, what, what's up? Right. My producers need to do what this dude doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's the impact I want to have. I want to have that. Right. To where you got a slew of record labels just like, I would love to see him like just make a fake HISD. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's when you know you're doing something. Because honestly, I ain't going to get mad. I ain't going to be like, oh, they trying to steal us. But honestly, I want to hit them so hard in the gut to where they like try to create this like fake group. <laughs> kind of bunch of dudes around. Everybody trying to be different. <laughs> that, that'd be the, that's when you know you did something.